Hello everyone, my name is Trevor and in this video we are going to be going over some advanced plate functionality that has been added to the Structural 3D module, as well as look at an example slab model using plates and other members as we have shown here. So in terms of functionality upgrades, in this most recent update the unstructured meshes have been improved thanks to a positive change in the algorithm that generates those meshes, as well as nodes and members being contained within those plate regions um, can, can be automatically detected in unstructured meshes. Um, something completely new that was not supported that is now is the ability to add holes to your plates and include them in the mesh, um, which we can see an example of. A, we'll do an example of um, in a few minutes. And in general, uh, there's just been an increase in accuracy and consistency in plate results as a result of all the updates that we've made. Uh, in the future, plates will also be included in any dynamic frequency or response spectrum analysis, and we hope to have that update um, eventually here. So let's take a look at how some of these changes work in an example. So here we have our concrete floor here. This is just a, a good profile of a building. Um, there's multiple plates, multiple diaphragms here. There's an overhang. Uh, we can see that there's a couple of shaft holes here, um, but overall a pretty um, good size, good complexity um, plate structure that we can take a look at. So let's work on making a hole in one of our plates. So I've already generated some nodes on this plate here so they're not connected to anything they're on they, they lie in the plane of the plate but to generate a hole here without having to split this up into multiple plates to create that hole we can simply click on the plate right click click on the new plate hole function here get this little pop up and now we can put in the node ids either in clockwise or counterclockwise order to generate this hole so let's do that now put in the nodes in clockwise fashion. And again, if you ever have any questions, make sure to hover over the tips, uh, tool tips icon here, submit that. Now we have our hole here without having to actually create another plate or, or diverge these plates into multiple. Um, you can create multiple holes in, in a single plate and all those holes will be shown here. So we have previous holes. Here are the four nodes I that we have ID'd in this in this uh, hole that we have here. And if we wanted to, we can delete this very quickly, um, but again, re-add it. So I'll just leave that there, we'll X out. And now we have our hole. If we go to the 3D rendering, we can see just our, our structure in general. We have um, some concrete columns. We have some concrete beams that are uh, cantilevered past the, the slab per se. Um, there's also a couple of shaft holes here, but here is that hole that we just created within that singular plate and That just adds a lot more ease of use to this uh, functionality So now let's take a look at meshing the plates. So we'll zoom out here um, Before you'd have to go into each plate mesh it um, One of the good updates that we've made is under advanced and plates We now have a really nice plate mesher tool. So this will be able to um, mesh all the plates at once. You'll be able to preview those meshes, include the nodes and members in the mesh as I mentioned previously, um, and just there's a lot more options uh, in this window rather than uh, the before workflow. So for this example, we're going to mesh all the plates at once. So we'll click on select all. Um, for most of the time, we recommend using structured quadrilaterals um, just because it's going to give you a little more routine results. You're going to get um, things again structured out and uh, it's easier to tell uh, where things are and, and everything like that. But obviously that doesn't work in a lot of cases because you don't have symmetrical shapes. So for us, we want to use unstructured quadrilaterals. And a way to kind of get around, uh, you know, in this case we have multiple plates split up. So if we leave the physical size off and we just leave it to the granularity, if we preview these, this mesh, we can see it's pretty variable because some of the um, the plates are large, the, the, the actual mesh elements are going to be large, uh, whereas over here the mesh elements are small because the plate's small. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the plates mesher, select all, we'll unmesh those, and let's do a unstructured mesh again. Let's specify a size. This is something that's also new in this update, is being able to specify a physical size um, for an unstructured quadrilateral mesh. Uh, so let's put in 1.5 meters. Now when we preview this, you can see it's it's a, a look, looks a lot like a structured quadrilateral mesh, and we're going to get a pretty consistent result. And simil similarly, as I mentioned before, we put that hole in the plate, 
now we can see that it's it's generating the mesh based on this. Let's go back to our plate mesher. All of these are meshed. So now that our plate is meshed, let's take a look at some example results. We're just going to use the self weight of these plates at this time. We can see that the mesh has taken into account these holes that we've created and looks like we're going to get pretty good results, pretty accurate results. So we'll click back here. And let's run a linear static ana analysis here. Okay, so our analysis ran. Now if we go to the plate results, the default is going to show you the deflection here, but we want to look at a new update in the actual um, color contour results. So if we go to something like major principal stress, we'll turn off the deflection, turn off the original plate outline. So now in what's new in this uh, update is being able to hover over any of these actual mesh elements and see what the exact results are for the nodes within that mesh element. So if we hover over, for example, this element here, we can see that it's on plate 10, it's mesh element 265, and the four nodes of that mesh element are 57, 193, 640, 192, and those are the exact uh, results for the results we are choosing to display. So for major principal stress at the top of the plate, we're seeing those four results as well as the element uh, results as well. So that's giving you a lot more um, granularity in how you know, detailed you can you can look into the results rather than um, comparing the colors to the color contour and guessing or, or trying to figure out what those values are. You can go right into the exact mesh element and look at those results. So for our plate hole, for example, if you wanted to know the results at the actual edges there, you can hover over the play elements and, and look at those results. That's going to wrap up this short video highlighting some of the new plate functionality in Structural 3D. We hope you guys found it insightful. Make sure to look for more information and improvements on our platform through our website and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on LinkedIn for more interesting content. We hope to see you guys on the platform soon.